I've never been to a Palestinian refugee camp. It's a little high tension, but it's actually a pretty nice building. The whole goal is to learn from the other side, and I think the only way that you can do that is on the ground. There was a wedding going on, it was right here, uh -huh. and there was a guy with an M16 firing in the air. You're always in traffic, it's dirty, and if you're a resident here, it's disgusting. And you're living in here, and you want to get away from it, you can. It really reminds me of the border crossing between Tijuana and San Diego. Calandia Camp Handicraft Cooperative. Kind of what do the streets look like down the camp? This would be like the equivalent of the hood in the US. The conditions here are not great. The Israeli soldiers were shooting tear gas, and we were here. All this black is from it's fires. tear gas, yeah. fires. Not so we're walking across Calandia to Israel. As an Israeli, you're not technically supposed to be here. It's illegal. But we're coming up right on the border right now. Corey does this frequently, so for you, it's not crazy at all. But for me, this is... And there are more walls. And then you can see Calandia, Ramallah over there. And we are going to be hopping on a bus. We out here. We, we are now in Kufar Akab, which leads to Calandia refugee camp, which leads to Calandia checkpoint, which leads to Jerusalem. So we're going to walk. <laughs> here we go. Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Kalandia, Kalandia Refugee Camp. Well, we're not actually, I don't know if this is technically Kalandia. We're about to enter Africa, it. We're, we're going to get towards it. Yeah. Another couple so we're, we, we've been spending the day in uh, Ramallah, in the Palestinian city of Ramallah. This is uh, Corey Gil Schuster. He has an amazing channel called The Ask Project. You guys can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Where basically, he goes around and he asks Israelis and Palestinians questions. Mm -hmm. And we had a pretty successful day today in very Ramallah. successful. Very good. Very yeah. uh, typical of what I go through. Yeah. Crazy stories we have. That was fun. And it's been, it was my first time in Ramallah. And now we're going to be walking through this refugee camp and seeing, uh, well, I mean, we're both two Israeli Jews and... Yeah, we could get in a lot of shit for this. Right? Yeah, we're not technically supposed to be here, but, you know, the whole goal is to learn from the other side, and I think the only way that you can do that is on the ground. So we're going to take this brisk little walk. we got about 10, 15 minutes to the border with Israel, and then we can cross back in. But uh, I just want to show you guys what it actually looks like on the ground here. So here we go. Unfiltered, unedited, just raw. I'm going to show you guys the whole experience going through here. And the Israelis, uh, the right-wing people, are all going to get mad that you called it a border. They're gonna be like, no, 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 this belongs to us too. Well, there's a border checkpoint, there's right? A checkpoint. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I guess it's like it's a border for me. I'm not. I'm not trying to make any political statements with this video, by the way. This is just a human experience here. Yeah, they got a BMW of uh, Kalandia here. So, uh, Corey, in the past, you've told you've been here before, and you told me you've had problems with filming here. It's a little high tension here in Kufaraka, but it went mostly in the Kalandia refugee camp. People got very upset at the questions I was asking because I asked very challenging questions. Challenge the Palestinian narrative. Challenge the Israeli narrative, of course. Um, and people felt very offended, and there was this idea in, from my first experience, in uh, refu Palestinian refugee camps of lawlessness, in a sense, uh -huh. that people could take it in their own hands to not allow people to even come into their camp. And by camp, well, you'll see what that means soon. It's yeah. buildings, not tents. I've never been to a Palestinian refugee camp. The one thing that I do know about Palestinian refugee status is that the UN sort of labeled Palestinians as refugees in a lot of places around the world, and this is also part of them. And these camps are set up in part by the UN, right? With UN funding? Yeah, they're funded by the UN. So health and uh, schooling, education up to grade 12 is funded by the UN. It's an interesting construct because I, I always expect a tents and like a tent city, but that's not the case at all. It's actually, I mean, it's densely populated, but it's actually a pretty nice building. Be fair, yeah, we're not in the camp yet. That's true. This is where I was, I was, there was a wedding going on. It was right here. Uh, and there was a guy with an M16 firing in the air. I have that video on YouTube. Well, um, so I can share it with you if you want. Yeah, that'd be cool. That was intense. No, actually go to his channel and check it out. That's the main goal here. I think public. I think I use it oh. for like when people play and Palestinians have no weapons. And I'm like, well, the guy in Kufarakab had an M16. So. <laughs> Wow, look at these cool alleyways, wow. Pastel Cosmetics. The, the logo is new meat. It's an Israeli um, HMO. That you, um, because you were explaining technically all of this yeah. is still Jerusalem, so right? Up until Kufar Akab is technically part of the Jerusalem municipal boundaries, but Jerusalem, the Israeli government, refuses to give services because it's across the checkpoint and it's chaos here. And for, I don't know how many, how much service the Ramallah or Palestinian government gives this area, but not much. You can see from garbage everywhere. As soon as you cross over into Ramallah, which is down there, suddenly it becomes a little cleaner. A lot cleaner, I would say. Uh, yeah. A lot cleaner. There's still garbage every so often. I mean, but there not is. Not as much. Yeah. And there's no here. Like everything is just chaos. Yeah. Or feels like chaos. Anyway. So there you go. So Sama Medical Centers. Yeah. It's the, and it's run by Israel. 
funded. It says Lumix. Funded, yeah. So it says Lumix. Yeah. So Lumix is a Hebrew word for yeah. national. Right. So. And here you go. This is something that we've been showing off in Ramallah in the last video, if you haven't watched it. But these are uh, pictures, posters the of the Shaheeds. Shaheed. Yeah. Martyrs. We don't need to spend too much time, I think, lingering here. But there's, there's like pictures or posters of them everywhere. Yeah. Have you ever done this? Have you ever walked across the border? Like this? Like walk to the checkpoint? Walk to, not the whole thing. Oh, that's I it. did right over here. Though. That's an interesting one. I want to show that one off. That's a cool one. That was a big uh, Shaheed oh, poster. <laughs> uh, there was a mural once and it was all about Palestine. Now it's about like trees or uh -huh. something there. But I filmed that. But that's about it. We're going to be crossing past what is regarded to as the apartheid wall, right? At some point here, or we're not going to see sort that? Sort of. Yeah, you see a bit of a wall. Yeah. It's not like Bethlehem. It's a little bit different. Uh -huh. But yes, it's part of the extension of the wall fence. Uh, technically, 90% of that is, 90, is, is fence, not wall. But um, yes, anywhere you're around people, it's wall. I so. just want to clarify, by the way, when I said apartheid wall, that wasn't me taking a political stance for either side. Mm -hmm. Yes? It's just what people regard it to. Yeah. I see it as a wall. I don't care how you call it. Yeah. That's just my personal standpoint. I, yeah, I also, in my videos, try to use um, the most internationally accepted phrasing. Yeah. And if it's known as an apartheid wall, it's... Yeah, that's, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm fine, whatever. Um, I think this is Kalandia. We're now in Kalandia. This Pretty is it? Sure. We're in here? I'll see if I can read it anywhere. I should be able to recognize the words. I don't know where the actual start is, because it kind of blends into each other. Yeah. It just it looks like it. So are we technically in Kalandia? I want to provide a real experience. Should we buy some carpets in Kalandia? Some Kalandia yeah, carpets? Turkey. <laughs> turkey for that. Might be better quality. Because they get the Iranian stuff. Yeah. Now, do you think do you think this line, like this traffic, is all trying to cross the, the checkpoint? No. So the problem is, we'll see soon, yeah. is that there's one, two lanes, and to the right, it goes to the crossing for Jerusalem. So there's uh -huh. always cars with the yellow license plates trying to go to Jerusalem because they're Jerusalem residents. And then it, it goes off to... Uh, the east and to Beth like to get to Bethlehem, uh -huh. for example. There are other places, but that, um, and so they get stuck at this area where it's uh, just traffic, and the traffic goes all the way back to Ramallah. So it can take a long time, mm. like twenty minutes, half an hour, just to just to cross back over. Just to cross, yeah. And are, are we going to be? From, are we expediting pretty... the process by walking across? Like no, no, because you can see the buses further ahead. Oh. Of us, so no. The bus is still faster than us walking. I can see why this is very frustrating. The question is, what do you do? First of all, who's in charge of this area? Um, <laughs> the Israelis refuse to take responsibility for this area. The Palestinians refuse to take responsibility for this area. So and right then, even if somebody did, what's the plan? You have, uh, you have apartment buildings and stores up against the street. So how could you make this a wider a street to get from Ramallah to Jerusalem? So people, the residents of this place are genuinely screwed. Like they yeah. are just not in or a good... If you, or if you live in Jerusalem, you're screwed. Right. Because you're always in traffic. It's dirty. Yeah, and if you're a resident here, it's disgusting. There's trash everywhere. Which, by the way, they throw their trash. But, you know, still. Um, yeah, you're screwed. And nobody wants to take responsibility for it. There is, I gotta say, for this area, there's a lot of trash everywhere. It's very dirty, unfortunately. Yeah. Look at this car. This whole back window is busted. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> yeah. Calling in holes. Yeah, these little, uh, looks like a subway grate. Uh, a wedding. Oh, it's a wedding. All right, it's not my first time around a Palestinian wedding. <laughs> That's cool. Wow, look at this rusted over garbage. Whoa, looks old too. Wow, it is chaotic out here. Really reminds me of the border crossing between Tijuana and San Diego. Yeah? Very similar. Oh, really? Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> oh my God. He's in a hurry. Got somewhere to go. Hey, to get some gas right now. Right. I'm running out. I might have been an impediment to him getting gas. That would have been an issue for me. What I do have to say is, as much as Palestine or the Palestinian territories are their own place, the influence of Israel as a whole on here is massive. Like, there's so, like, even if you want to escape it, and again, I'm not taking a political take on this in any way, yeah, but even if you want to escape the conflict in a lot of ways, if you're here and you're living in here and you want to get away from it, you can. There's always going to be a reminder to you that Israel is a part of your life here. And if you despise Israel, for a lot of people, that's the reality. It's very interesting, you know, there's like, 
There's Israeli license plates everywhere. There's flags. There's Hebrew in a lot of places. It's an interesting dynamic. You know, it's very, very interesting. Look at this. This is cool. I don't know what this is, but it's cool. A little tea shop? Coffee shop? And he sells plants. I always respect people who sell plants. It's really cool. This is the wall? No, the wall that I, they had a mural. Oh, oh. About freeing Palestine. Uh-huh. Who covered it up, though? Israel? No. 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 Uh, my guess is, just guessing, but the UN, uh, people might have gotten criticism. There's, oh, here's some stuff. Uh, these are, here, this is more religious uh, Quranic stuff. Uh, but it was more about the story of Palestine, if I remember correctly. It was more about the story of Palestine, and of course, it was like about the return. The yeah. right of return for Palestinians. So, I mean, there's some, there's still some stuff here. I don't know if that, if this is anything to do with it, but... My guess is yes. It's definitely a cool uh, Palestinian plaque. I really need to read Arabic better. I can't... I wish I could read it. Oh, there you go. Kalandia Camp Handicraft Cooperative. We saw these earlier. I remember we passed, we passed by here earlier. Oh, here's like a memorial. Probably for Shahids as well, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. know who they are. Maybe one of your viewers can tell us who they are. Yeah. I am sorry if I am walking fast. I definitely don't want to linger or draw any attention to myself uh, yeah, we're, here. We are told by Palestinians who are not from the camps that uh, a camp is very dangerous. Yeah. They're very uh, suspicious yeah. of anybody who would be filming. Yeah. And I get it. I, I also want to be like respectful towards the sensitivity of people living here. Like I, I definitely don't want to bother anybody with a camera. That's why I everything that you're seeing right now is being recorded with an iPhone. It's very like raw, basic, unedited. It doesn't feel like it's a camera. Sure. It's a camera. This is kind of what do the streets look like down the camp? One of many. Do you have any idea about like statistics of how many people are living per house here or no? no. You could look on uh, Wikipedia. Oh, I think that's a mosque in there. That's interesting. On Wikipedia, you can find statistics for all these places. Yeah. Where, where are the people of this camp were from uh, originally in what's today Israel? So the people, the people of this camp is the people who got displaced. Yeah, this place from okay. the 1948 war, which means 1947 to 1949. Right. What's known as the Nakba, right? For Palestinians, yeah. as the War of Independence for Jews. I don't oh. remember. I've read all this stuff, but I have no memory. So I don't remember exactly where they were from. Uh, my guess is, like, Jaffa area, mm -hmm. other parts of... Oh, that's interesting. Jerusalem. The road here, it's actually in Hebrew, the signs yeah, already. That's from the time when Israel controlled all this. Oh, wow. Pre... What was that thing back in 1990? Something? Yeah. Fascinating so, to be this here. This is an UNRWA school. There's a sign up here. And then it's just funded schools. They got their own way that they teach, right? A curriculum that they teach? They have their own curriculum, yes. It is supposedly Czech internationally. Uh, Spoli, there's a lot of criticism for being very anti-Israel and anti-Jewish. Oh, it's and a girl's school. Yeah. Public, public girl's school. school. This is the closest thing you can come to in this region as like the hood. This would be like the equivalent of the hood in the US. Or down Ramallah Road, Alley 216. Yeah, it kind of, it, it feels very, like, much like the projects in the States, you know, when it's like government-built housing that's meant to just squeeze as many people in a small area as possible. I mean, I haven't been to many places. I've been to Egypt, though, so I'll, I can compare it to Egypt, that the living conditions in Egypt were much, much worse, in my opinion, uh, than the West Bank. I'm talking only about the West Bank, because Gaza, I really wasn't in. I was in once 30 years ago, and I don't really remember much. But I, even in a refugee camp, I, it's worse than, for example, South Tel Aviv, because there are places that look like this in South Tel Aviv. Not as bad. Yeah. This is in much worse condition. Um, I do also, like you said and asked uh, about is how many people live in a house. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it could be worse than in Israel. But I would assume it's similar to if you were like Yemenite, Mizrahi, uh, in you know South Tel Aviv 40 years ago. Would you be down to go in this bird shop real quick? Oh, I love a bird shop. Should we go in this oh, bird shop? Of course. Are you kidding? So I just came across a bird shop. I'm going to ask them respectfully to film before I go in there. But there's a bird shop with seemingly a lot of birds. Okay. YouTuber. Thank you so much. Welcome. Wow, this is cool. <laughs> oh my God. There's a lot of birds in here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Palestinian bird shop. In my life, did I ever think I'd be telling you this on video? No. Looks like we got finches. I can see if I can recognize my birds. Canaries. Canaries? Yeah. These these are Indian ringneck, I think. Exactly. Right. Very good. They're an invasive species, species here, right? Invasive species yeah. here. They're usually caught in the wild, which I feel kind of bad. Yeah. Here, I don't understand why people are taking these pets because they're very difficult to tame. Yeah. Trust me, I tried once. I've it's actually no seen. I've seen these in a lot of places out here, and I know that there's been this new initiative of people in Gaza catching them and selling them because oh, yeah. like to, as a way to make money, which has been yeah. interesting. Yeah. But that's what they look like: Indian ringneck parakeets. So yeah. these are all canaries? These are finches. Finches, okay, that's a finch, yeah. Adorable. Wow, I wonder where, I wonder where they get all these birds from. 
Well, these are not wild, obviously. You have to. Yeah. Have these are to. budgies, little Australian budgies, right? Hey, bud. Let's go see. Also, you have to Look at these. It's like big chickens and turkey. What is? This? Oh, is that a peacock? That's a peacock. Oh man, this is crazy. It does. It does smell horrible is, in here. This is a place that's gonna breed a new COVID. Whoa, we've got crazy pigeon species. There's a lot of pigeons, mostly. Does anyone in your family raise pigeons or raised? No, but I have a species of chickens in the Philippines myself. Oh yeah. I have some really cool chickens, like a special breed of chicken. So I'm I am obsessed with this type of stuff. I've always loved birds. Okay. Wow, this is uh. It's fascinating. It's very fascinating. Very nice. I just can't believe there's a peacock in here. Where was that peacock? It was yeah. down here, right? Yep. Look at that. That's a whole peacock. Of course they are. Look at him. Very, very interesting. You got these big chickens. All right. So we got some cool information in that bird shop. I asked the store owner. His name is Abu. Cool guy. Uh, I asked him a few questions. Uh, he didn't want to be on camera. I did ask if I could film him. So he said that it's typical that around like any Arab household has around six to seven people. I tried to clarify if that's the same here. And he said that that's what it is. I, I, do, I don't know if to take it for face value if you understood my question or not. I'm not sure. But regardless, six to seven people in one house, even if it's a little apartment like this, is kind of crazy. And he also said that he's 45 years old. He's been in this refugee camp for 45 years. So he's like been living here for the last 45 years. I don't, again, I don't know if that checks out or not, but. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This place has been around for since 1948, 48? something yeah. years. Yeah. I see what we're coming up on right now is the apartment. Do you want to wall. go to that side of the street? Yeah, definitely. Let's go to that side. Crossing the street in Kalandia. It's crazy. It'd be crazy out here. Thank you. Yeah, man. The conditions here are not great. This is uh, a lot of garbage everywhere. Specifically, this area of Kalandia, where the checkpoint is straight ahead, is technically under Jerusalem municipality control. But Jerusalem municipality workers, who are mainly a lot of them are Jews, they just refuse to serve this area because it's just chaos. And they're probably going to be attacked if, if, uh, even if they're not Jews, even if they're Arabs, would might be attacked as a symbol of the occupation. Yeah. Uh, but technically, they're responsible uh, for water, electricity, uh, maintenance, roads. Um, so how does that? I'm not sure what happens. Meaning they're renovating this area. It's been about two years since the start of COVID. I remember. We were talking about this. Uh, who actually is responsible for it? Is it Kogat? Is it like the army? I, I don't know. That I don't know. But it's a mess. We're coming up right like now. For example, here. Yeah, yeah look at that building. It's like a building. Somebody owns it. It's collapsed. It's just collapsed. Yeah. It's been that way since 2000. I was here in 2011. It was exactly the same. Wow. Because I was watching stone throwers on that building. They are standing. With people standing on top of it. And I was thinking, someone's gonna fall. <laughs> they were throwing stones over the other side of the wall. No, no, no. Here, like. Straight ahead oh. is the uh, checkpoint. Uh, the Israeli soldiers were shooting tear gas. I wasn't sure if it was bullets or tear gas. It turned out to be tear gas. And we were here, and there were Palestinian stone throwers here, and I was at one of these stores across the street. Wow. Uh, that was intense. I was actually uh, shaking, and I asked somebody, is shaking a side effect of tear gas? And he said, no, you're scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's true. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> Only time I've ever seen violence here. I gotta point out something else, but in this whole, like, imagine wearing a keffiyeh, only seeing eyes, stones throwing Palestinians. I mean, like 150 Palestinian youth doing this. There was also something very theatrical about it. Of, uh, like, when one guy got hit in the foot by a, a canister or leg with a canister, everyone started screaming, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and they raised him up on up. And they brought him to an ambulance, and I see the guy, and he's like drinking water. He's absolutely fine, or I assume fine. Don't know. But it was like a lot of theater, almost, of uh, of like, look, we're the heroes. We're courageous. Look what we're doing. And uh, I don't know what the Israelis are doing because there's too much smoke. And I was thinking, of, my my army is shooting at me, uh, along with these Palestinians. I know. I'm not making it about me, or I shouldn't make it about me. <laughs> but you can't. I mean, what is interesting about being right here is that you can see. Remnants of uh, yeah, all this black is from it's fires, tear gas, yeah. fires, things like, like that. Can we walk up to the wall, or is that not a good idea? I think I wouldn't get too close, yeah, because I don't know. Yeah, you know, you don't know with Israel who's actually looking, yeah, because I was over there, see where that guard tower is, yeah. and I started walking towards where the cars go, and I hear in Hebrew, and I understand Hebrew, I couldn't figure out what they were saying to me, and I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna get shot, and they're not gonna know who I am, they yeah. think I'm a Palestinian. Yeah, it is actually kind of crazy. There's a, you can see the Israeli flag over it, right over uh, Arafat's face. Uh, that's insane. Like, 
This is all really crazy. It's nuts that we're walking across Kalandia back into Israel. This car is completely uh, destroyed. That's all remnants of fire, tear gas. Again, there's that mural of Arafat, the PLO leader. Now, when do you think it'd be a good idea for me to put away my camera? Oh, when we get indoors. Okay. You can't really legally film there and uh, they may have a way to uh, erase your hard drive <laughs> if you're in there filming. The unfortunate thing for me today is like, I haven't been able to use my American passport right now for reasons where I had to basically renew it. So I'm only on an Israeli passport right now. And as an Israeli, you're not technically supposed to be here. It's kind yeah, of illegal. It's illegal. But I know I can't be prosecuted for it. It's just, they're gonna give me on the border. So I'm like not excited for that, but Corey's a pro and has done this billions of times now. So hopefully we just sweet talk our way out of it. That's what I'm hoping. There's so many pieces of art here. This, though. by wow. the way, this art was not covered in black. Last time I saw it. So oh, really? So this, this is, is new. new. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe there is. I, I don't know. I haven't been paying attention to the news actually. Yeah. So that's part of it. So we're coming up right on the border right now, huh? Yeah, I can so see the Israeli flag up there. So this is driving through checkpoint. We have to go through the terminal part, which is the walking through. Uh -huh. Which uh, every Palestinian under the age of 40, I think, that doesn't include tourists, by the way, uh, has to get out here and walk through. Every single Palestinian? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. none of them can drive through? No. Well, um, oh, no, no, if, sorry. Sorry. If, if you have a car, you're allowed to go through. But if you're on a bus, you actually have oh, to get off. Oh, if you're taking public transportation. If you're taking public transportation, you actually have to get off. Wow. You're gonna go through. I gotta be honest with you, like today has been pretty laid back. This is the only place where I felt a little bit on edge. Yeah, you're okay. It's just getting into that terminal. Yeah. See, this is another thing. So you're a, a Palestinian youth, or even, you know, up to 40, and you have to get off the bus here and walk across the terminal. There's no convenient way to do it. Yeah. This is crazy. It's like this is, you're, you're hopping walls, you're going around things. Like it's no. not set up and it's been this way supposedly under construction for years. Wow. So, which, yeah, it's not fair. It's not, you know, if they're going to have this rule of a checkpoint, which I actually But can't. to be fair, like Israel has had a lot of issues. Like it's, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's the whole situation's messed up, but like being no, an Israeli, it's like, I can kind of, I can obviously understand a lot from our side why things yeah. are done from the israeli side and i was living in the second intifada in israel there were bombs in that going guard on. tower is filming us or something that's okay yeah there were people every day blowing themselves up during the second intifada right so it, as someone who went through that it makes sense to wait me. it says no pedestrian that. crossing here yeah, yeah. No, okay so that's the thing where are the pedestrians supposed to go unless i'm missing something oh i love your car that's a hot that's a good car <laughs> nice one <laughs> All right, I think we're going, the, are we going the wrong way? No, we're, we're good. Don't worry. I am so on edge right now, I don't know why. You're okay, don't worry. <laughs> I do this all the time. So, I can't, so I can't bus, imagine myself doing this by myself. <laughs> so, okay, so there's different buses, right? Some buses go in and right. drop you off over there. Some of them just end like right there and you're expected to walk through all that chaos. All of this. Yeah, which is crazy. Wow. Uh, you, probably get, you can't see it very well, but the hills at this time of day, beautiful. Yeah. You get like a pinkish yellow hue. Yeah, it is. Is that still Ramallah over there? That's uh, yeah, good question. Don't know. Oh, here we are, guys. Look at that. You can see right there. Welcome to the Kalandia Crossing. Yeah, we're going to go around. We have to go around. Wow. Corey does this frequently, so for you, it's not crazy it's not, at all. Yeah. But for me, this is... It's very intimidating, though, <laughs> because I'm always thinking, am I going the wrong way? Like, yeah. am I getting too close to the guard tower and they're going to shoot at me? I it's don't know. definitely not built efficiently or, like, understandably. Yeah, specific. not at all. No. And the, the Israeli response is always like, they understand. They understand. And I'm like, I go through this all the time. And I'm like, no, they don't understand. <laughs> I have to argue with Israelis about this. And we're, we're going to be taking another, like, Palestinian bus after. We're hopping on yeah. the bus that we took... Yeah. So even like once we get through the border, we're taking another technically same bus, it's technically. like the same yeah. Palestinian bus. Or there bus might be a different bus, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. To Damascus Gate, which is still game, like a Palestinian, Palestinian area bus, but it's run through Israel. So right. uh, I'm a little less, you know, a little, a little less on edge. Again, uh, I, on edge. I hope I hope that if there's any Palestinians watching this, I'm going to only assume that there will be that you don't take this as like trying to be offensive in any way. This is my raw, honest thoughts of experiencing this for the first time. And I can almost start, like, I can't relate to you, obviously, but I can understand what you're feeling when you come through here. Very intimidating. So my, as I was saying before, that on the one hand, I don't want to end it there. On the one hand, I lived through the second intifada, and it was, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. It was scary. Like living in any situation. 
uh, war situation. So I understand the need for checking Palestinians, I understand the need even for checkpoints. But if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it, do it in a way which is humane and easy right. and not like, well, what, what does it matter? They're Arabs. What does it matter? They're Palestinians. And I'm kind of channeling what Israelis say. To be like, well, they already suffer. Eh, what's the big deal? Right. And truthfully, it's not like we had to walk around. It was chaos. Okay, it wasn't in the end of the world. But it's, it's, I don't even see it as the de demeaning part or dehumanizing. That's not my, my thing. My th thing is, it's not, it's just not right. Because as a Canadian, that's how I think about it. <laughs> well, I can definitely say, it's like, it's raw, honest feelings. It just doesn't feel safe. I can understand from their perspective already perceiving Israel as the enemy. It's like just not a comfortable place to be. This isn't like something I would ever want to do. Especially not have to do every day. So like when we go in, yeah. Yeah, you have to balance your phone. Do you think I could film the sign again or no? Probably shouldn't. No, I'm gonna put my phone away here. Okay. I'm putting my phone away here. Let's see what happens when we cross the border. We'll block ditch on the other side. Yeah, wish us luck. Oh man. You're okay? There's a lot of hype for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so it went fine. She, she, you gave her your Israeli yeah, she license. Passed her. And she no, went, my, my, my ID. Your ID. My official ID. And she went, okay. And then she, I was like, all right, here we go. Yeah. I showed her my Israeli passport and she just goes. Yeah, she kind of gave you a look. I thought she was <laughs> like, say oh, something. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I guess it's legit enough, you know? The reason I was a bit nervous is A, he's younger. I'm an older person, so I'm kind of like not a threat yeah. to them in their mind. I think this is all supposition. I don't know. He's younger and he's using an Israeli passport, which Jerusalem residents were Palestinian also, or even uh, Israeli Arabs, and some, about 10%, 15%, I think is the stat, um, have an Israeli passport, but it seems odd because they usually have their ID on them. And he doesn't have an Israeli ID. And just to mention again, like that was. Not just easy, that was like beyond easy. That was yeah. like, yeah, one, yeah. one second. Like, Truthfully, because I go through these things all the time with Palestinians, because people always think that suddenly I'm going through a settler checkpoint, like it's magical, like it's yeah. different. I'm like, I'm going through a Palestinian checkpoint. I've only seen issues very rarely, very rarely, and they were usually ridiculous. Like a woman who doesn't speak any Hebrew, speaks Arabic, says, This is my son, Ibrahim. Yeah. And Ibrahim in the ID shows to be 13 years old. But the kid was obviously eight. And they were like, why, how is this possible? <laughs> and maybe she was just lying, like meaning she'd have an ID for the kid, young kid. She, it could have been, I don't know. Maybe he really does look like an eight-year-old, I don't know. So those are the type of things that I've seen. Also, like I haven't I, seen abuses, but I, I, I wasn't here in 2000, 2005 when there were abuses. I don't mean to like, be holding the camera just way, one way, but I'll twist it around a little bit. Yeah, I, I definitely don't want to film the officers, but it's interesting. Like, you get, there's there's walls. There's the there's the thing. Beautiful sunset over there, and the more walls, and then you can see Kalandia, Ramallah over there. It's interesting, and you can see the border down there. That's a checkpoint. Not really the border, but the checkpoint. It's right down there. Fascinating, riveting stuff, my friends. Riveting. Again, right in front of us, you can see the border. Then we've got. The bus terminal down here, it looks like. There's a bunch of parked buses. And we are going to be hopping on a bus to Jerusalem. Here we go, guys. And it's, they now have shelters. They didn't have this last time, too. Yeah, that's nice. This actually is like kind of... I'm not going to say the idea is nice because there is a giant... Oh, and they have new bathrooms. So before... The bathrooms look nice. The bathroom was over there. Yeah. And you walked in and there were all over the floor. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> lovely. Because, of course, who's going to take care of it? Israel doesn't want to take it. They don't want to take care of it. I wonder who built these restrooms, though. These are new. They will be awful within, I assume, yeah. a few months. But because I don't know if anyone cleans the stuff. I don't know. I'm all about you take responsibility. You clean things. Can the Canadian way. You don't litter. You take care of bathrooms. I don't care who it is. Somebody. You see the wall? Like, the wall, like, segments off. It's really interesting the way that it's set up. Like, look at the wall just breaks open here. And then it breaks open again. And then you have the guard tower. Thanks, man. We did it. We're on the bus. What do we got, like around a 20 minute ride now? Yeah. We're back in Damascus Gate. What a day. All right, my friends, I'm back in Jerusalem, back in the crib. I am going to give you guys a quick taste test of my five shekel. That's like $1, and these cost like maybe another eight shekel together. Turkish Delight, or Lukum taste test that I bought in the vlog we made in Ramallah. Turkish Delights are one of my favorite things ever. I grew up eating them in Israel. And I've never had this blue flavor before. I've never seen it before. It's literally like a vibrant blue. It's super cool. It looks like it has some nuts in it. So let's try it out. Mmm, it's got pistachio. Mmm. Oh, it's minty. Oh, no. 
Ugh. I don't like it. It tastes like toothpaste. Yeah. Ugh. That's gross. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting that. Okay. Not my favorite to begin with. But here we got like a whole bunch of ones that I'm hoping are not mint flavored. Let's try this pink one maybe. Mmm. That was rose water. This one's a little green. Mmm. I don't know what that is. Is this red? I can't tell. It's hard to tell what these flavors are sometimes. This one maybe it looks a little green. Maybe it's pistachio. Mmm. It's brown. No idea what this is. Mmm. Really good though. Wow. It was very spicy. Oh, too spicy. Oh, God. Yeah. Wow. And this is what happens when I can't read Arabic and I just aimlessly throw a bunch of different Turkish delights. Wow, that's really spicy. Oh, my mouth is on fire. All right. That is the end of the vlog. We'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure that you join my channel and support me because this channel is dying and I'm not making any money anymore. It would go a long way at supporting my channel. I love you guys very much. See you in the next one. Love you a long time. Goodbye, clats.